18th century. And that's the problem today. We have no language. It's Babylon. Everybody speaks something, but, but I mean, when I hear a contemporary piece today, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't like it, but I have no idea that, that I have come home. Because, like, I love this feeling of here we are. Yes, etc. So I don't want to explain now every note and every measure. Uh, then comes the recapitulation, and then after the. say no very firmly. It's not a yes, but it's a no, no. Second movement it couldn't be more different. Adagio molto. Again, these days composers were very interested in, in tempi and often composer would just write adagio, so or allegro or allegretto, this is what we call tempo ordinario, ordinary tempo. If a musician saw on the paper two, four time adagio, then you associated it with, with a certain tempo. This is beautifully uh, described by Charles Rosen in his latest book on Beethoven. That, uh, adagio in, in this time is, let's say, in, in metronome marks, uh, quarter equals 72, let's say. But if a composer wanted something particular, not an ordinary tempo, then he writes something else. So he says, adagio molto. So this is an extreme, extremely slow movement, extremely slow by Beethovenian terms, so not by Wagnerian terms or not by Brucknerian terms. Again, you have a, almost like a string quartet texture, but it's very, very solemn. It has a great calmness and great tranquility. After these first eight bars comes the variation of the same theme with semi-quaver accompaniment. This was the main theme of the second movement. And now comes something new, something quite rhetorical. Uh, again, Beethoven writes, here, main notes and ornamental notes. So, so you, again, we have a huge leap, and he fills it out with these uh, little ornamental notes. And the answer in piano. Again, the first is an exclamation in fortissimo. So, again, you have enormous dynamic contrasts. Uh, Edwin Fischer, the great Swiss pianist and Beethoven player, thought of Bach's Six Partita when, when 
he mentions this movement, um, I can see a similarity rhythmically, no other way, because Bach goes... <laughs> Of, of the rhythmic similarity. And now the bass takes over. Again, we, we reached the dominant of the dominant. So this slow movement is in sonata form. That's again a new element. Sonata form without a development section. And now we come to the second subject, which starts here. Beethoven takes all the trouble to write out these little 64th and 128th notes with, with five or six stems. So uh, he was not a lazy man. Uh, <laughs> Mm. Mm. Now it gets very rhetorical. Um. we have very short strings in the upper register. So Beethoven always complained in his, that, that the piano doesn't sing enough. He wanted it to, to sing more and to sustain more. So you know, it's, it can never be long enough. We have to think of singers. Then come just the dominant sevens. Two, three, four, four. And comes the immediately the recapitulation. As I said, this is a sonata form without a development section. The only difference is then that the second and the third subjects we hear in the tonic key as opposed to the dominant. Uh, at the end of this, there is still a very beautiful coda, and in that we can admire Beethoven's art of variation and improvisation. He was a great, great improviser, and next to Haydn, his works in variation forms are, are unsurpassable. So here... Mm -hmm. 